a warm welcome to Dodger's Trips. I'm Dodger. Today I'm at Snake Pass in Derbyshire with the intention of looking for the crash site of a Boeing Super Fortress that crashed into a peak in 1948. From what I understand it's a two, two mile walk so it's going to take about an hour Hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about why a US Air Force plane crashed. In England, the plane was carrying $7,500, the equivalent of over $95,000 in today's money. So hopefully we'll find out what became of the 11-man crew and the two passengers that were on board as well. Also, we'll fi find out what, if any, remains of the aircraft are still here to be seen. We've got Mountain Rescue here. There's a, a running race going on at the same time. It's very busy up here. We can see how how high we are here. We're walking into the clouds. Now I've got two special guests. Or you might say three special guests <laughs> on today. I've got I've got three special guests with me today. I don't know, I thought you'd, you might have checked. <laughs> what if we're going opposite direction? No, this is towards it, I'm trying. Oh, you, you've never done it. Because it showed you the check going towards it. So I've just found out that we're winging it. We don't know if we're going the right way. We could be spe spending an hour walking and there'll be no crash site. But yeah, my special guest today, oh, Victoria, my daughter, who would like to history, and my partner, Rob. And Bonnie the dog. Oh, you got to win it. Right, so there's a sign. I did say there's signs along the way, sort of pointers, so... <laughs> I'll turn around. Oh, it's just going around. Aircraft wreck. Aircraft wreck site. Take a photograph of the sign. Yeah, I'm going to... Oh, I can't put my gloves on. And then send it to... Yeah, if you can send it to me, as well. Aircraft wreck site. Please help to avoid trampling damage. Follow the way marked route. Good. Wait, let me go. So I feel feel better now that at least we're heading in the right direction. The cloud is really low, and when we were driving here, it was, it was full sunshine. You can just see over there in the distance some sort of breaking through there on the hillsides. But where we are, no, it's just we're actually walking in the clouds. I mean, it is quite busy for the for the run, but there's a lot of people also taking this walk. I understand it is quite a popular location to go to. 
plenty of dog walkers amongst them. There's come across the puddles, the puddles are full of ice. Quite a good footpath actually. The odd puddles that come across the runny sort of they're not very deep. The crowds have certainly thinned out a lot since where we're at the start of the walk where the, all the mountain rescue were and <coughs> the race organisers. There's more ice here. You wouldn't think it would be right weather for helicopters to be out. No, don't. Oh, no makeup. Oh, tell you, you don't need makeup. Mm -hmm. Right, so we've been walking about 10 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, maybe 30 minutes. So we must have started about 12 o'clock. So we'll see how long it does take. Oh, the footpath's not quite so good on the gates. Oh, it's paving. Stone paving. So it's a bit uneven. <laughs> I've really enjoyed myself. We've been wanting to come to this this site for well well over a year since I'm thinking it was my daughter Victoria who did tell me about it a year ago and we pl we had plans to come, never made it. So yeah, I waited a while, but so far so good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's nice to know that we've got the mountain rescue not too far behind us as well, because there's no phone signal out here. There we go, a bit of a dip. Even the footprints have got ice in them. Yeah, the good thing about this walk is you, you do feel you're out in the wilderness, which you, which you are, but also you're not too far from company, just in case, you know, you do have a bit of an emergency. We now lost the the paving, <coughs> so we are just on a well. It has been a, a made track at once upon a time, but it's very very uneven now. Make sure small stones and and mud, basically, but still level. It hasn't been much of an incline so far. The old man's dashing ahead of the youngsters. I think we must be walking uphill here. Just a short gradient, but definitely going uphill just by how out of breath I'm starting to get. <coughs> hey, sorry. Just complaining I'm going too fast, so I had to slow, had to slow down for it. <coughs> but the slower you walk, the tougher it is, actually. We're back to a paved, paved footpath again, stone flags. Still going the right way, so hopefully that marker is for the bomber crash site. Oh, look at the sunshine on that little side. Another marker. Well, I'm not trying to put too much mud here. Yeah. Marker's coming thick and fast. Yeah. 
in a bit of a dip here, but just over there on that hillside there's a lot of different groups of people and there was a larger group just where the clouds hit in the hillside so we're thinking that's where the site may be so there's quite a number of people up here two or three dozen people so we just asked these people in front if they knew the way to the crash site and the East Europeans or Ukrainians or Polish or something like that and it's their first time here as well so we're all just heading to where the people are but it looks like it may, it may be, the, the debris if anything will be spread I would think over the hillside Always nice, the sound of a waterfall. Mover, maneuver around and over the boulders. Another marker pointing us this way. Yeah, there's another of the white arrow markers pointing up to the hillside, so we're all right, I think we're good. Where's Victoria? This is where she normally fall in the water. This is where uh, non-gripping non trainers <laughs> can she get across dry? Made it. <laughs> All right. No. Uh, only leggings. Pete, I missed the fall bit. But yeah, we're, we're climbing up another peak here. So. Ah! Oh, God. Yeah, look how deep that went. Good job, but I've got a good boots. <laughs> that, that's covered it, yeah, it's right up, but I'm good over my ankles anyway, so. Yeah, a tree over there, it looks like the Sycamore Gap. The oh. tree that got chopped down, didn't it? It was, yeah, so Derbyshire's Sycamore Ash. I think we're here. It's over there, it's next brow. Just first found first sight of some wreckage. You can see quite a lot of people up here. So it's taken us about an hour walking, but we haven't been striding out, we've just been taking it easy, so I reckon it is about two miles from Snake Pass, laid by there. It's a bit of a strange feeling when you come somewhere like this. In the location of an aircraft crash and in fact where anybody has lost their lives there's a strange feeling don't know if it's the location itself or it's just us as humans can sense and the debris so this is where the the main impact of the super fortress was into the hillside debris scattered around I think people have been 
scolded for taking away piece, pieces of the wreckage in the past. And of course it is frowned upon. The only part of the aircraft that survived intact was the, the tail section. But here got like a, a rim of a, a wheel. And the, the wheel carriage, I guess, here. There's not inclined to touch anything either, it just, it's just got that thing about it, I think. It is almost like a, a cemetery. A big part of the fuselage here, split into two. Look how it hasn't rusted, is that aluminium? Doesn't rust, I don't know. Maybe you can tell me in the comments about aluminium. Is that what, you go right up there, there's another part, part, large chunk. And here again, look, this wreckage has been out here since 1948. So as I say, the, the plane had 11 crew and two passengers on board, two military passengers. It was skippered by the pilot, Captain Tanner. The plane itself had quite a bit, had quite a bit of history. The super fortress of which this is was like the successor to the Flying Fortress, which did a lot of the bombing raids over Europe in World War II. Big part of the sort of chassis there. Yeah, so the, uh, the, the Super Fortress was the successor to the Flying Fortress. And it was built as a bomber. But this particular aircraft was modified to act as a reconnaissance aircraft, so it was taking photographs. And in fact, it flew over the Bikini Atoll in the Pacific following the atomic tests. So it's photographing the aftermath of that. This same aircraft was also involved with the Berlin airlift which famously took place in 1948. Well, any facts or extra information that I find when I'm editing it, I will add it either as commentary or, or as a text on the screen. I'm go I only knew I was coming here again yesterday, so I just had a quick read up about this incident. So it goes right up the, right up this hillside. Now that's the main section there, which has become like a bit of a memorial to the crew and the passengers. You'll you'll have gathered that the, the crew and the passengers all were killed in this crash. What happened is, is the aeroplane took off from RAF Scampton near Lincoln. Now RAF Scampton is famous as the home of the Dam Buster Squadron from World War II, from that famous raid on the road dams. And it was flying just on a short flight to Burtonwood Air Base near Warrington. And it was carrying $7,500, which was the payroll for the staff at the air base. As I said in the introduction, $7,500 in 1948 is the equivalent to more than $95,000 in today's money. So the crew all perished, their bodies were recovered. I think the mountain rescue team, local mountain rescue team was actually on a practice exercise when this crash occurred and they were sort of sent up to recover the bodies. Military police came, secured the site and strangely the 
$7,500 was survived the crash and the money was recovered. So is that the, is this an engine in, in a wing with the propeller? The base for the, the propeller to sit on. I'm not sure there's one right next to it as well. I think this was a four engined plane. So here we've got somebody's tied an American flag to this part of the, the wreckage. It's been here a lot of years by the looks of it. And uh, during the 1970s, a local man was walking around this site and he, he spotted a ring. And that ring was identified as belonging to Captain Tanner and it was able to be repatriated to his daughter in America. Now, again, when I was reading about this a year ago, I did read of a relative, a son or grandson of one of the people who perished who, who came and visited this site and laid their own memorial. I'll have to see if I can find that bit of information again. But hey, this is the, the largest piece of the, the wreckage from what I've seen so far. And this seems to be the main focus for people leaving their own poppies. Quite a number of American flags. I can see at least two there and a Union Jack. Maybe this is the scene of an annual service. I don't know, maybe on the anniversary. There's a small little dedication garden here. Rest in peace, marks on one of the stones. Rest in peace from Sheffield. Lots of little individual messages on these wooden crosses. And I think on that larger cross, that is maybe the, very faded, but that could well be the names of the crew and passengers. It's always strange walking around here where, you know, places like this where pe people have lost their lives. Although they're not buried here. Yeah, Rob just pointed out, this is clearly one of the wings. And so maybe the two engines over there were off this particular wing. And that, and that wheel, that wheel carriage there, Rob, had been under the, the wing, wasn't it, maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they'd be the pieces that wouldn't have scattered so much, I suppose, where they dropped the stayed. But yeah, there's like a, a wheel carriage here, you can see. Very, very strange. Well, not strange. I just spotted a, a little memorial that, that I'm going to you know, a proper official memorial that I'm going to go see in a minute. But just on his way there, spotted this in the hillside, look, in, in the peat. Somebody has marked the spot with four crosses made out of sto small stones. Of course not. I'm not, I don't even want to touch anything. It's like a grave. It's a grave, isn't it? It's a burial site. Yeah, I mean, they weren't buried here, they all got the bodies, but either died, didn't they? Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like, it's like touching a body, isn't it? Oh, look, again here. Some sort of symbol. Kelly's I'm not sure what that makes. To come back, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has been a, a big cross. I think this is actually a big cross going up and across. Yeah. 
Oh, there's crosses. People are making crosses all over the, the ground, leaving their own little mark of respect. You could do that, Victoria. You know, people are just making crosses on the ground. You could make one. So this is like the, an official memorial. We'll have a look at this in a minute. Yeah, we are. So we've got like a... Oh, no, you're OK. I was, I was happy to wait. In memory, here lies the wreckage of the B-29 Super Fortress. Overexposed was the name of the plane. Of the 16th Photographic Reconnaissance Squadron, US Air Force, which tragically killed while descending through a cloud on the 3rd of November 1948, killing all 13 crew members. The aircraft was on a routine flight from RAF Scampton to American Air Force Base Burtonwood. It is doubtful the crew ever saw the ground. The memorial was laid by 367 Air Navigation Course of RAF Finningley on the 12th of November 1948. 88, so on the 40th anniversary. So we can hear a uh, helicopter, we're seeing it once, we can still hear it in the clouds and it seemed to be carrying something underneath, hanging from the fuselage. So yeah, this, what happened is that the, it, it was poor weather when this plane left RAF Scampton and the crew were had to resort to using the navigation equipment, they couldn't, there was no visibility. And it's believed the error came about because the crew, through their calculations, thought they'd passed over the peaks, but in fact they hadn't, and they started descending, and they ended up in the hillside. Uh, another piece over there. We're going up here, there seems to be a marker on top of this. That's probably a cairn to mark the, the tip of this particular peak. So we're just making our way up here now to... to yeah, it is. It's just starting to snow. Just getting some snow coming down here. So we're making our way up here, which we think is the peak of this, the tip of this peak, should I say. I'm not a seasoned walker, so I don't know all the terminologies for these sort of things. Well, it's a bit of a rough patch here. Yeah, there's a, a white stone cairn. It's got some sort of mast on attached to it. Oh, it's probably a marker for the, the race. I think these are the marshals we've seen. This is the second tent that we've seen for the marshals. Oh, Vicky, it's like Hillclear, where people have carved the names in the stone. Oh, it's a signal and it's a radio, radio, radio equipment. Oh my god. I need you on my phone. I need you old dog. Yeah, we are. We are in the clouds. So there's there's hundreds of the Pennine Trail comes near here as well. That's an aeroplane, isn't it? Well, that's low. I hope he hasn't misjudged his navigating. <laughs> yeah, there's many trails going in all different directions. Official routes you can follow. You can see the cloud coming in. So this is the stone cairn marking the, the highest point of this peak. And there's a radio mask here for the, the race. The, no doubt the racers will check in at every, st every stage, just so they know they've accounted for everyone. But here there's names and dates inscribed into the rock. It would take some work to put a name in, wouldn't it? Wilson, 1948. 
Moran. Mom, should I get Ralph and Nancy? Oh, this is no. during the war years. L. Chatterton, 1940. Goose. N. Wild, Wild Goose. Yeah. <laughs> How amazing would that be to be a, a descendant of one of these people and come up and actually see their name where they've worked the rock and left the mark all them years ago. Just look how clear this is, Victoria. You think it was done yesterday? Yes, yeah, the snow. Can you see the snow coming down a bit now? It's not thick. You get all that nicely, you know, chilled in names, and then you get our chavy efforts here, <laughs> don't you? What well, these are all like chavy efforts, aren't they? And then you get the, the proper people who have taken some time and done it, done a neat job with it. C. Dixon. But I was just saying, if you if you were like a, a granddaughter of somebody who left the name up here, and you could come up, couldn't you? And how long has it took them to put that name in there? That's that's taken more than a day, I'd say. Would you? Yeah. So that's during World War II, yeah. And it's been protected, I suppose, from that side. Amazing. So, just got the cairn, the highest point behind us. Just making us way back to where the, the main wreckage field is. Gonna get a quick photograph, I think. And then the snow is starting to get a bit more faster but it's they're only small bits of snow it's not it's not going to be a hinder us but yeah the weather's turning there's something else i've got to tell you about this this aircraft crash and uh it's gone out slipped out of my mind that's why i put the camera on to do do this bit and then tell you about it on the way back to the site uh, I don't know. old age it'll come to me so it looks a bit like a ploughed field here. I mean, well churned up. I can still hear that helicopter flying in this weather. So I must be doing some sort of important work. So we're flying in these conditions, I would suggest. Oh, well, that was some sort of radiator, some cooling mechanism. Who knows? Again, not all over the hill, hillside, crosses people have marked the spot. What was it? I was going to tell you. So, I told you about the crew, you know, all being killed, the bodies were recovered, the money was recovered told you where the plane was flying from and to the cause of the accident oh yeah that's it it's, I've remembered so this isn't the only site in the peak this aircraft crash site apparently there was there's been sort of seven other planes have gone into the the countryside around here everything from sort of 1939 through to I think the 1950s. I'll see if I can put a list up on screen uh, of the various aircraft crashes that have been seen. But maybe they were in more accessible areas and they were able to remove the, the wreckage, which they haven't, you know, obviously here, two miles from nearest road. And Bonnie the dog's had a nice time as well. Not been too much for her. Her little legs. Let me in friends. Yeah, 
Kong. Hello. 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 She's fine off at least, but she won't leave another one. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, so Victoria's shortcut was a bit off piste. We're off track and we've had to sort of what what do you what what's it called when you make it up as you go along? <laughs> we, it. Yeah, we've had to use our initi oh. initiative. <laughs> you get up. Hey, uh, uh, Oh, oh yes. Oh look her, she's on the right nose there. I bet there's a dead body on there. Oh, we're back on footpath. Yeah. Let her off now. Just this last bit. Yeah. <laughs> So we know for next time. Yeah, that's a well worn path. Hopefully, these people are going back to cars and they're not yeah. just going on a 20 mile walk. I know. <laughs> yeah. In the clouds, over there. To the waterfall. I think this is more uphill, the more uphill route to come back. Going back was supposed to be easier. You don't really get a sense of how deep that gorge is down there. Waterfall. Oh, well, the path's all right. The track, should I say. Two folks, I've been up to me ankles a couple of times where I stepped on what look like frozen mud, but it's just collapsed under me. But for the most part, I've been all right. But my boots cover over my ankles as well anyway, so there's, my feet are still bone dry. How come whenever I go for these walk, it starts snowing? <laughs> just just going to get back in into the car in time. We went out for our tea yesterday. Went. Now we, we drove through Huddersfield, part of Huddersfield, to get here. It was the shortest route, so like I said, it's, uh, it's taken an hour from home to get here. But we come through Huddersfield and yesterday, we actually went to Huddersfield for our tea. And there's a place called Marston's Chicken. I'm not sure what part of Huddersfield that, that was in, but apparently it's so well known in West Yorkshire. And there was a bloke called John Marston, who was born in 1935. I think he died in 2020. And he created a special recipe for his chicken. Now people have tried to copy it, gone away and started up their own businesses, but they've never been out to duplicate what he created and so this chicken shop is well famous and it, it's only just like a little just a bit bigger than a, a, a hut really but the queues are out into car park and apparently it's like that from 11 o'clock in the morning you know right through to when it closes on an evening and we got I got two chicken breasts and chips and that's uh, it, I don't, it was not like southern fried chicken, not like KFC. It is a flavour completely of its own. So if you're ever in Huddersfield or you get the opportunity, go to Marston's. You can ring up and, and place your order and tell them what time you want to collect it. It'll be ready for you. Or because there's queues in the car park, there's someone 
with a tablet and he's taking your orders and, and everything still pay by, pay by cash when you get to the counter but the order's there ready for you more or less when you get inside the shop so they've got a good system going little business but booming so there we are a bit of a food recommendation for you there they've caught up with me the youngsters are caught up with the old man we're still walking along the side of this hillside heading to the rough region of where the cars are we'll probably have to find a track to take us across to the lay-by it's obvious that she, re she recognises that Christmas tree up there has been near the beginning so we've got to find a way to get across Alright, we're coming to the end of the walk now. The cars are all lined up there in the lay-by at Snake Pass. So we're only five minutes from the cars now. I must say it's been an absolutely fantastic experience. Well worth the walk out. So from Bradford it's took about rough, very roughly, give or take a minute or two, an hour to get here. An hour's walk out to the site and then you could spend as much as, as long as you wanted there. Obviously in better weather, warmer weather, you'd stop for a drink and a picnic maybe. And then an hour back by Victoria's <laughs> shortcut. <laughs> and then an hour home again, so it's a good, good day. But if you're thinking about coming here to the, <coughs> to the crash site, yeah, I'd say do it. So, We'll just, we'll just get our guests to say goodbye to you. Okay, do you want to say bye? Bye! Say bye! bye. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> and I'll just say, till the next trip, Dodger out! <laughs>